thanks for listening. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to We Say Things, episode 231. Suns fan here with Cinder Meister himself. Greetings, salutations. Hello. Hello. Dota fans. Yes. Hello. Thank you to our beautiful patrons, which we will talk about immediately. Talk to you in Birmingham, Cap Broccoli. I assume you mean Captain Broccoli and not Cap, which means you're joking. Hopefully we see or you there. Or he just wants to talk to Cap. Yeah, or that. STGC Daniel, humbled bookmaker, recommends Relic Arena. Wife heard Pyrian's belch, now divorced. That one gets me every time. Mr. I love the NBA segment, the episode where Clay Thompson vandalizes multiple houses in Sacramento. <laughs> Uh, it's fun to be able to laugh at something that Cinder just doesn't understand. That's good. Uh, pepper balls, T coil, Lab Dota, Yatoro does it again. Cinderin, Disco Farm D, the Mega Pope, and Zan Xavier. And Nate Thicko zero one Hamscroats. Shark TM Janie Dop. Nothing to see here. Yes, sweet Ivrement. Ben Broomhead loves the NBA segment. Wooden aftertaste anonymous and. Tall volcano in the Philippines consists of an island within a lake on an island within a lake within an island. Mr. Neeple. That's pretty cool. Wait, let's see. An island within a lake on an island within a lake within an island. I'm trying to visualize this. Yeah, it sounds like something you'd make in SimCity after fucking up yeah. horribly. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. Pretty much. Thank you for the trivia. Uh, okay, so before we get started with the Dota stuff, uh, I do have an NBA segment. In fact, I have a W NBA segment. Oh, so that's unusual. The, the reason it's unusual is because the WNBA uh, has not been getting the... I mean, it's been ramping up a bit, but obviously compared to the NBA, it's just nowhere close in terms of sponsorship, in terms of viewership, in terms of money in general. So uh, there is a, a phenom named Caitlin Clark who played for Iowa in the NCAA. And she has been blowing everybody away in terms of just how clutch she is. Uh, she plays like a lot like Steph Curry, just throwing you know threes from a ridiculous distance. Basically, she's changing the game. And people have been uh, watching her. A lot of people have been watching her. There's been a huge uptick in the, WM, or in, in the women's basketball scene. And they're really excited about her. She just went number one in the WNBA draft, how much do you think she gets paid for being the number one pick on a team? How much per year? Hmm. That's a very good question. Oh, I forgot I'm we're going to say... Visual. There we go. There's Caitlin Clark on the screen. $200,000 a year. She gets $80,000 a year. Oh, my uh, other guess was hundred k <laughs> Like I said, the WNBA oh, like uh, it's very low. Her sponsorships, though, yeah, she's going to be getting yeah. the the estimate is probably fifty million dollars in sponsorship with like her. She's getting her own shoe. I think it's with Nike. Uh, but yeah, yeah, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, she's going to be the face of the league. She's going to be the face of women's basketball. I think it's really cool. Uh, and then transitioning from that to the NBA, Cinderin. It's going to blind everybody. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find a dark mode one. I apologize. Oh! The playoffs are almost upon us. The play-ins are currently, I believe, slated to end today. As you can see, the Suns actually made the playoffs, so that's why we weren't in the play-ins. We are sixth seed against the Timberwolves, which we'll talk about in just a moment. The Lakers won the play-in, uh, so they're going to be facing off against the Nuggets. Uh, they're going to get crushed the Lakers, that you've, is, of course. You've never been this invested in the play-ins, have you? Specifically because the Lakers could lose. Uh, the Lakers could lose, and the Suns were literally one game. If they had lost one more game in the season, they would have been in the play-in. So it was like a very close... Like, everybody's standings right. are super, super close. Um, and then the last... Uh, the Thunder, who's the number one seed, will play against either the Kings or the Pelicans, and it'll likely be the Kings, I would say. Uh, that's just the Western Conference. But anyway, the reason I want to bring this up uh, is because the Suns are playing the Timberwolves, and this is going to age poorly, Cinderin, but the Suns have been playing 
pretty well the last two weeks. I haven't been disgusted okay. to my stomach watching them. Okay. And in theory, on paper, we got the best possible matchup. The Timberwolves are really good. I actually like their team quite a bit, but we haven't lost to them this year. And it feels like their strategy in general is to take threes away from teams. Okay, that's their strat. Mm. And force them to shoot mid-range jumpers. Where we are the best mid-range jumping team in the league. Our top three players are all, they all live in the mid-range. Uh, so I think even though they have the home court advantage, I would say we are the favorites in this. But that happened how many times before and we've lost the series. So it doesn't mean anything. We'll see how it goes. How is it? How is it now the series are? Are they best of seven. something? Or is it yeah, best, best of, seven. of seven. Correct. So, what, so what's the home court advantage? Do they play the entire series at home? <laughs> entire series? They, <laughs> they play four out of the seven games if it were to go all seven. Yeah, that's what I was like. Because you were like, they have the home field advantage. And I was like, that can't be that big in a best of seven. Unless they have a lot of games at home. Yeah, considering... uh, It's a minor advantage, right? It's like one extra game, potentially. uh, I mean, yeah. I don't know if I'd say minor, but it's not huge either. Especially with teams like the Suns Mm -hmm. that are just as good at home as they are on the road. But yeah, it should be an exciting time. Uh, We're going to be in Birmingham. And I will be wake. So if if I suck at casting, Cinderin, or if I show Mm -hmm. up tired to work, it's because I'm waking up. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell you. So I'll be waking up at 3 a.m. To be watching the Suns, of course. The secret is to not go to bed. Yeah, that's even better. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Appreciate that. Yeah. No worries. Okay, so that's the NBA news. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you. And congratulations to the Dota scene. The long-awaited update, Cinderin. Crownfall. First, they came out with a blog post, Ascension Day, which I'm not going to read. I'll click on this. And there is over a 100 page comic about Skyrath Mage and Vengeful Spirits. This was released several hours before the Crownfall update. Uh, I'm not going to go... I haven't actually had the time to read this all. I definitely will, though. People have said it's quite good. And the lore stuff is always nice. Uh, And then we get to the actual Crownfall update, which... I, I don't... I don't know if you just... It's okay if you haven't read it yet, but I don't know if we should just skip over it that quickly. I just want to get in a word about the comic. This comic has... It is... I think it's really... First of all, it's really beautiful. I think whoever is... Wait, you've actually read it? Yeah. Oh, I just assumed you didn't do anything to prep for this. That's great. Go ahead. I read it. I read it last night. It came out 12 hours ago. Yeah. I read it straight away when I saw it was out. Um, What was I going to say? So... The artwork, I think, is is really beautiful. I think a ton of effort went into this. Whoever drew it, I think, did a really good job. I think it's an enticing story. It's obviously only part one. So I don't know when they're going to drop the future parts. They haven't given a time frame on it. It just says that it's happening, right? So um, don't know how long to wait for the next part. But this is easily the comic that they have put out for this game that i would say the most effort went into because this is just act one right so Mm. they really i find it interesting because i think this is something that how to put it i don't know how much this does for people's interest and hype around the game and i enjoyed it i think it was a good comic um i remember previous comics that they've released in connection with either Arcana drops or with hero releases or whatever, uh, were also very positively released or uh, positively received, I mean. Um, but it is, it's a crap load of work to make something like this. So I'm just wondering, like, I'm looking at it from a very pragmatic pr- perspective of is this worth it, kind of, mm. um, compared to, you're not like reallocating resources from programmers, right? It's not the programmer sitting here drawing it. So it's not like, oh, you can't have both this and a big patch or whatever. Um, but I just, I find it interesting that Valve are putting so much effort into this comic in particular in this patch. Um, but it's cool. I, I really liked it. So I'm curious what people think about, like, also the future acts, if they're going to be similar length. Because mm. um, this was definitely... Like you said, it's like a hundred page comic for Act One, which is a lot for a video game, I would say. So. Yep. Yeah. Very good though. 
So then we go to the crown fall update itself. And this has been met with uh, a lot of negativity, I'll say. Mm -hmm. So obviously the comic was part of that. And they came out with a new, what are they calling it? Uh, overworld map. Or the, mm -hmm. the markets of Midgate is act one. But it's essentially a cavern crawl, but more interactive. Like there's storyline to it. There's different pathways. I guess there was different pathways in cavern crawl. Um, but I think it's really cool. The the cavern. I mean, I've never really been into cavern crawl per se, but they have like little mini games, which I haven't gotten to play the mini games or anything like that yet. But essentially, you mm -hmm. start your path out, and you need certain types of tokens to unlock uh, certain areas of the map to be able to continue your pro progression through the pathways. And it'll essentially tell you which heroes will drop things. So it's similar to Cavern Crawl where it gives you like a list of heroes that you probably want to play. But the cool thing is you still get a token even if you lose the game and you get more if you win. Uh, yep. Unless it's Turbo. Turbo, you get two tokens if you win, zero if you lose, I believe. Um, there's tons of rewards with a new Candy Sack, Crown Fall Coins, which that, this is an interesting one. So Crown Fall Coins, uh, you earn them by filling out the map or whatever. You collect 10 of them to trade them into the Crownfall store for about an $8 discount to any item costing eight or more. That's interesting. We've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. um, and as I scroll through more, there is a, of course, most of it is free, but then there's a couple side quests, I believe they're calling it, uh, which cost yeah. $15, and they come with custom creeps, and obviously the side stories have a bunch of cosmetics that could be tied to it if you finish them off. Like there was a Ricky, I don't know if they actually show it here. We'll scroll down here in a moment, but it has a, like a, almost looks like a Crimson Witness type of dagger, which, you know, it looks yep. cool, but it actually changes the effect for Tricks of the Trade to look ridiculously cool. So uh, that's 15 bucks for the side quests. And then the Arcanas have... I mean, do you want to go through this one at a time in terms of what you think? Because I know you haven't gotten a chance to play. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm just... I'm looking at this map. I think I think this idea is really fun. This kind of reminds me of... What was it called? Super Mario Bros. <laughs> the way this is laid out, where you have like these... I, I'm not going to say that game pioneered this way of laying out the map, but... Um, I, I think this looks intriguing. Uh, I like the mystery part of these like unique encounters because it's one thing in the previous cavern crawl, you know, you're just playing heroes, you know, in advance what you're playing for. There's like, you, you get like vision range of the next part of the map. So I guess there's mystery to what is where, but you know what there is, right? Mm. Like, you know, okay, there's this many tokens, there's this many sets in this. I don't know what these encounters are, like what they're going to do for the story. Um, and I one think of them the, is fishing, by the way. That's the one that shows up. On yeah, the show. well, it does literally say fishing, and they showcased it. So, but the other ones, I don't know. I don't know what it is. So, it. I think there's a bit of. I think mystery is very good in video games in general. I think it's an underrated aspect that people don't put enough stock in uh, when they evaluate a game. Uh, is it can be mystery either in the story, it can be mystery in discovery of finding out something, and something that Dota doesn't really lend itself to very well. So you kind of need to do it um in this type of way if you want to include mystery in the game so i think it's really cool that they're trying that i like that concept a lot um as for the side quests and for the value of them i think that's a little bit difficult to gauge so side quest one has two treasures which is already like five euros out of the 15 and then there's additional steps and of course you can buy you can use coins to get past this gate right mm. Uh, I don't know if you, because I, I, you cannot obtain, how many coins can you obtain on the free path? Three, six, nine, twelve. So if you do one path, you can, or if you, if you do the free part, you can get it, you can get one of the side paths for half price, but you cannot get both of them at a discount. Because the maximum, if you take path, let me see. No, you can actually. Hang on, I'm looking at this the wrong way. No, I'm not. Never mind. There's 15 coins on the main path. By design, of course. 
Okay, I'm putting spending too much time on this. So yeah, overall, my first impressions are this looks really fun, and I think it's a cool idea. So okay, we move on to the Arcanas. Uh, this is Skyrath. I have to be careful because <laughs> Skyrath and Venge, especially with the Arcanas now, they're in the same game. That is genuinely going to be confusing. Uh, but Skyrath Mage said Devotions of Dragonus uh, comes with. Uh, I mean. I guess we don't have to mention everything because the Arcanas come with a lot of stuff, but uh, the special custom icons, and you get... Uh, this one I couldn't tell the difference, or maybe it wasn't working in at the time I was trying it in the sandbox mode, but new effects for attacks, kills, deaths, and denies. Um, but the ones that did work, the icons for Rod of Atos and Phylactery are different, and then there's effects for every single one of his spells, and they look really cool. And he has a, oh, I should have shown this. Yeah, the effects for this one are insane. In fact, the Arcanas, I don't know if you feel the same way. I feel like the one that it comes with, like especially the Skywrath, is cooler than the upgraded version. But it makes sense with the lore, I guess, why they would do that. Mm. Um, like this is the previous version of Sky. I don't know. Actually, they could have flipped it. I guess now that I think about it again. But are they are the spell versions different when you have yes. the? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so one see. one of the versions oh, of the Arcana, which is the one that it comes with by default, is a very dark feel, like dark blue with black, and then some dark gold trim in terms of the armor pieces. We don't. Have, I feel like we don't have that much dark stuff these days. So that's why it stands out quite a bit. I think it's really cool looking. And then the upgraded version, the alternate style is, uh, he just <laughs> looks like a cooler version of the original Skyrath, which is much more bright, uh, bright white and yellows and uh, with light blue armor instead of the black. So, and that costs uh, 35 bucks. And I was trying to figure out the difference between this and the Vengeful Spirit Arcanas mm -hmm. because they're both 35, but uh, the Venge comes with three styles. Uh, so, Shendel Zare, they call her Shen for short. Um, used to call her Chandelier in Dota 1. I don't know if you did the same, Cinderin. No. That's an old school thing. <laughs> uh, so, her look is also very bright. It's kind of like the unlock for the Skyrath Mage. She has purple wings, though, and then the rest is very bright colors. And the icons that change for her, other than her spells, of course, are Force Staff and Ags. And I should mention, when you change the styles, it also changes the look of the item icons as well. Uh, and then she has two alternates. One is the darker version where it looks more like her, like a regular Vengeful Spirit, but just upgraded. So in theory, kind of the same way that they did with the, uh, the Skywrath set. But the third, I found very interesting. She becomes a different character in terms of... Uh, not like spells or anything, obviously, but she's a literal character from the lore uh, named... Oh my god, why am, I, why am I blanking on this? Chat, help me out. It's Queen something. She's in Artifact. Uh, oh, shit. Leave it on this for a bit. <sighs> Imperia. Thank you, chat. So she's in Artifact, and I'm not going to show the picture here, but in Artifact, she looked really badass, like a villain. And in this one, she looks kind of anime and honestly very similar to Ven, to the, the second or the first Venge variation of this arcana. Wait, so what were you saying? There's a card in Artifact called Queen Imperia. Not, there's a hero in Artifact. Right. Queen, just Imperia. That she looks yeah. like. Okay. But you haven't read the comic yet at all. No, I have not. All right. Imperia is in the comic. Okay. Does that change she something? You don't have to spoil, but... Would that She's change my perception? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. She doesn't look like a villain no. in the game. No, it was just you. Just no, it was just you pointed out this hero looks like Imperia. I'm just saying, like that's. No, I'm saying it is Imperia. But I'm saying the version in Artifact looks way cool. Here, I'll show it on stream. Okay, maybe I'm just missing the point here. Oh, you, oh, you're just comparing it to Imperia's look in Artifact and thought that one looked cooler. Yes. Got it. Okay. Here's Imperia in Artifact. Now that looks badass. Right. And I feel like the version they put in the game is just I like remember this card. more anime. I mean, this is sec this is Artifact Foundry, the better version of okay. Artifact. Yeah, I didn't I didn't play that. <laughs> but 
Uh, anyway, I thought that was interesting that they just use uh, another character as the third version, but it's the same price as the Skyrath Mage. So, mm-hmm. yeah, what do you think of of these Arcanas? Well, first of all, this is probably a bit of a hint at what ha- ends up happening in the story, right? Um, okay. Which I, I find an interesting choice. I mean, I guess they kind of have to do it this way so that they release the full value proposition if they're going to sell the Arcana, right? Um, but this is also going to, I'm assuming this is showcasing like a little bit of what happens later in the story after act one. Mm. Um, what do I think about it? I look at these two arcanas. I mean, they're very good quality. I haven't checked out the voice lines yet, but the spell effects on Skyrath, for example, look very nice and clean. I, the thing you said about anime kind of is what strikes me as well about this is that these heroes i feel like they're a little bit smooth you know what i mean Mm. like dota's heroes have this they're like more rustic most of the time um this was some of my criticism with the uh anime related heroes that came out in relation to uh yeah the anime the uh the mirana as well as the dragon knight was that To me, they felt a little bit out of place in the game because the rest of the heroes had more like a similar level of... More similar design, I guess. And they were just a little bit off. I'm getting a similar vibe with this. And maybe that's just... Maybe this is what uh, Valve have either recognized or believe that people prefer. Uh, I personally would like these to be a little bit rougher around the edges. But the overall themes are really nice. Um, Venge getting wings like you said when she's in the game with Skyra I feel like maybe her wings are like a little bit too big perhaps Mm. in the set like um, I think you will be clearly able to distinguish between them in the games but maybe this is a little bit over the top for that design I don't think they're going to change anything though I think now it's there so yeah. Um, but overall oh by the way Venge's attack animation I don't they don't mm. list it as being different. It feels totally different and it feels incredibly good. In fact, boot up the game right now, Cinderin. Mm-hmm. Try it in demo mode and tell me if you feel the difference mm-hmm. or if it's just I'll placebo. Like demo this. Venge Arcana, demo Arcana. Okay. I'm going to demo it right now and you yeah. just want me to hit a hero. Just anything. Yeah, last hit a creep. It feels incredible. I mean, Avengers attack animation is pretty good. I'd say it's definitely better than average, but this one feels even better. It's fascinating that it can feel better when it's the same. I know. Right? I know. <laughs> yeah. Venge just has a, I mean, it just feels good because Venge has a really good attack animation. It's probably also the first time you've demoed Venge in four years because she's not a strength <laughs> offlaner. You might just not know what the hero feels like, you know? All right. All right. That's enough, Cinderin. She has a she has a good attack animation. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's uh, but all right. Let's uh let's rate these arcanas like overall, not necessarily one to ten or whatever. First of all, I'm a big fan of them being separately purchasable. This was something the community has been talking about for a while that they miss the arcanas that were separate and not mm. um tied in a battle pass to a specific level or whatnot. So now you can just choose to get them. Uh, without getting all the other stuff. If you love this hero, you can now get its Arcana for about, what's that, 35 bucks instead of effectively dumping 100, 200, whatever bucks on a battle pass and then getting tons of other stuff that you might not care about just to get the Arcana that you like. So now it's separate. I think I personally always preferred this style. I think this is a better way to do it. Um, That's not to say that I didn't, you know, spend a lot on the battle passes because I liked the Arcanas that were in there and other stuff, but... um, I think hopefully there's other ways of, like they're testing with this battle pass, other ways of monetizing the game that isn't like extremely expensive arcanas behind a a deep paywall. Mm. Uh, This is like smaller bites, so to speak. Like if you you want to get all of Act 1 for Crownfall, it's $15 or whatever, which you can cut in half. Can you, you can also make your arcana cheaper. Yeah, you can reduce the price. Yeah, you can reduce the price of your arcana if that's what you want to do. So if you don't want to play the side quests, that's a choice you can also make and then get your arcana for like 25% off mm. by playing through this path. I don't know. I think I, I'm i not mad at this so far. I think this is, uh, this is quite yeah, good. The arcanas, I think, are very good quality. I'm surprised with the Skyrath Mage. I, I don't know if I feel 
if it's just me and the minority, I think the base version is way better than the upgraded, which is good because that means you don't have to. Mm -hmm. But how do you even unlock the next one? Actually, uh, you, you need, need to, to complete, complete the main four. quest. I see. And okay. I think for Venge, it's the same, right? Yeah, and I think uh, the no. Okay, I see. So the Venge one, the second form is completing main quest act four the third form is completing all main quests and all side quests for all four acts mm. so the third venge set is clearly more expensive than the other ones yeah uh, i think that's that's really cool yeah it's like uh, a my only, I mean, the only gripe that I would possibly have is that Imperia doesn't look as cool as Artifact Foundry. <laughs> I feel <laughs> like they took, I, it's, I think if I just saw this character, like, okay, that looks pretty cool. But looking at this one from Artifest, like, that's fucking badass. Like, it, this was one of the art pieces that really blew me away from Foundry. And I was really excited to see uh, her translate into Dota 2. Of course, we've been waiting for Kana and Prelix for how long now as well. But yeah. Uh, the fact that it's uh, something you can take the price off of with the coins or you can just straight up buy them. Like, what can you not like? I mean, I'm not going to buy them because I don't play <laughs> either of these heroes, but uh, that's just a me thing. So I just, uh, just as a quick extra, or not extra thing, I just looked at this some more. I take back everything I said about whether this is a clue of what happens in the future of the comic. There's nothing. I misunderstood the way this is implemented. So there, there's okay. nothing there. Um, okay, very good. I I didn't realize that all three versions of the Venge have the same like type and size of wings. It's just a recoloring, right? Uh, and Queen Imperia is shown in the first comic. It's it's an interesting choice that they make her a character, though, right? By making it a skin, effectively. Yeah, I was uh, talking to my chat about this, and I was like, "Have they done this strange. before?" And they kind of have with like like the CM is a wolf. Like the persona, right. a lot of the personas kind of change mm -hmm. who they are, but I think this is the first one that's come from, I mean, I'm not saying it derives from artifacts specifically, because it was probably in the lore in some capacity, but I think it's the first hero in artifact that is now being put into Dota, but it's not the way that I was envisioning. <laughs> I was envisioning an actual hero as opposed to just an Wait. unlock skin. So... This third skin, the Queen Imperia one, has to have custom voice lines, right? I imagine. So if you, so this is like it's effectively like a double Arcana almost, where you have the Venge Arcana, and then if you unlock the final part, which costs more because you need to play all the side quests and everything, you effectively unlock. I'm assuming a a different character that has the same spells, so she will have different story, different lore, different voice lines, right? You can't just put the I mean, you're not going to put Venge in Queen Imperia clothes and then have her talk like Venge, right? Surely. I don't know. She, this is a different character. I, I, you have to. I mean, are you not in game? Can you not test it? Or is it not demoable? I think I'm I tried sure her out. Does. Yeah, I think I did. Does she have different ways? I didn't. You're the. Oh, it says when, as soon as you demo her, it, there's like a note. It says, note, Queen Imperia's voice pack is currently disabled as it contains spoilers for the conclusion of. Oh. I see. Crownfall. Okay. Cool. Oh. Yeah. So basically what you're saying is the Venge Arcana is better value than Skyrath. I mean, no, I'm not saying that because the Queen Imperia upgrade costs how much? If let's say the side quests cost the same in every act and mm -hmm. you reduce them every time, then those four sets of side quests cost about another $35 or so 30 yeah. So it's essentially, it's a, essentially costs twice an Arcana to get the Queen Imperia one. Uh, whether that's better value or not, I I don't know. I mean, that's always going to be subjective. But um, do I agree with you that the dark version of I was about to say Terrorblade uh, of yeah, Skyrath is better? You really? Don't it think stands so? out more. Well, yeah. At least. It's it's more distinct. Uh, as for the spell effects themselves, I think I like the spell effects more in gold. But maybe I like the character more in dark. But you can't separate the two, right? Like my my the way I think about it is when you're using an Arcana, mm -hmm. or really anybody that's not you putting stuff on their hero for cosmetics, they want to look as different as possible. And the first variation is literally does not look like Skyrath. Other yeah, than but having then by, but then you could argue that well, having the gold one is going to be 
less common, so that's where you look the most different than the population. Yeah, but the, I would sure. argue that the the unlock you can tell it's mm. Skyrim because <laughs> that's okay. kind of how he looks. He yeah, just yeah. looks like an upgraded version of regular Skyrath, you know. But mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. But yeah, I, these are very 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 good Arcanas for sure. Uh, moving on, we're not going to go through every set, but of course there's a bunch of treasures in the I keep wanting to say Cavern Crawl. What are they actually calling it? Whatever, uh, the Cavern Crawl equivalent, the yeah, upgraded 2.0. Uh, and, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, they, for this at least, at least so far, there's no keys to unlock treasures, which, round of applause for that. That is the worst fucking system in existence, and this one is far better. Wait, is that actually true? I'm pretty sure that's true, but now I'm questioning whether that's true. <laughs> remind, remind me again what the difference is between buying a key to unlock a treasure and paying the same amount to unlock a treasure without a key. Nothing. Well, that's not true. Because okay. uh, this doesn't have a key, but it has a price. You cannot obtain these treasures without buying them, I think. Right? There's, is there a free treasure in the path? Hang on, let me see. Like when you get Fuck, where do I find when it? you get a chest drop. Actually, this happened today. I got a chest drop from the last event they did, which was God knows how long ago. I'm like, oh, a free chest. I'm like, oh wait, it's not actually fucking free. It's because the chests aren't free either. That's the difference. You have to obtain okay, them via yeah, playing okay, yeah. or buy them off the market, and then a key to unlock them as well. It's just there is one personal free preference treasure two toward the end of the free path. So you can get one of the second treasure. And then in the side quest areas, there are a treasure one and a treasure two in path one. And in path two, there is... No, never mind. There's two free treasures. There's one treasure one and one treasure two on the free path. Yeah, there's definitely a few sets in there that I would say are quite good. Uh, not all of them are in the rares. Um, well, yeah, on this, they're, oh, they are, actually are showing some of the treasure twos. But yeah. So there's going to be four acts to this uh, Crownfall event, if you want to call it that. Uh, the next one will be unlocking in mid-May. And I believe they, it should be semi-monthly or close to monthly uh, because it ends August 8th, I believe, the fourth one. Uh, it's just to give you guys a timeline. And, that and is, you can play every act until then as they unlock. Yeah, so, I would assume so, yeah. Now they've, I think they've specifically stated that. So when Act 2 unlocks, Act 1 doesn't close. Mm -hmm. You can still play Act 1. It's so funny how they... that gives you four months for everything, but only one month for the last act, I'm assuming. Mm. That's what it means. So essentially what they've done is they've taken uh, Cavern Crawl, upgraded it to 2.0, if you want to call it that. They've made this into... You could call it a miniature battle pass. It doesn't mm -hmm. look the same at all, but if you go into... I assume Fortnite's like this because they actually uh, popularized this version of a battle pass, but I've been playing Helldivers who have the same thing where you can have multiple battle passes and you put whatever credits that you own and you can put them into whatever you want. And this is kind of a way to reform that in a way and make it more interactive with mini games and whatnot, which again, cannot attest at all to if the mini games are even good. Uh, but yeah, I think... The way that I would describe this update, before we get to the negatives, <laughs> mm -hmm. is on its own, without any other context, Cinderin, Yeah, this is cool. This is very cool. I know a lot of people like Cavern Crawl. I was never a huge fan because it kind of ruins games because people are just picking shitty heroes that they suck with. Uh, but this definitely makes the Cavern Crawl more interesting. I think that goes without saying. I think the and you don't have to play a specific hero, right? You can play a subset to get the tokens. So right, you're not as pigeonholed. They did have that in Cavern Crawl. I don't know if it was for all of them, but you remember like it was like tanky heroes or heroes that yeah, had yeah, this. Yeah. So there were a list before, but... I, this is bigger. This is much bigger. Um, but yeah, I think this is a... Again, without context on other shit that's happening, this mm. is cool. And they're not, I feel like they're not being very greedy. Uh, the side quests, if you want to do them, it's up to you. The rest is free. You can use some of your coins that you get from playing and make things cheaper. That's a cool mechanic that we haven't seen before. Overall, in a vacuum, mm -hmm. 
quite cool. All right, Shannon, before you go on your negative rant, okay? There's one thing we didn't talk about, which is the bundle. Try to open that one up. What do you mean the bundle? You can buy a bundle, the Crownfall bundle. Is that on the website that I'm on? Uh, I don't know if it's showing on the website. It's showing in the client. Well, if you can't see it, I can explain for you what it is. It's very simple. Okay. So you pay, I guess for you, it's like $8. And you get 30 caravan candy sacks, which are the ones you can use to effectively do the you know, the pulls of trying to get something cool from the caravan, similar to that what they've tested out previously with the candy store, whatever. It's, it's mm -hmm. a similar concept. You get three caravan re-rolls, which is where you can just, oh, I don't like the rewards I have here. I want to try again. And then the kicker, 20 MMR double down tokens. Oh, right. I think that a lot of people will buy this for the MMR double down tokens only. And there's going to be a lot. This is going to sell a lot. I feel like the double down token was one of the favorite parts of the battle pass for a lot of people. It's upping the stakes of the game. It's giving you the choice of, I think we have a better draft here, uh, or I'm playing my best hero. I have good matchups, whatever. Uh, and it gives people a way of legitimately trying to climb the ladder faster, right? Um, I love double down tokens when they had the battle pass. I, I felt like there were too few of them. I would have loved to have more, uh, but I don't know how many levels you had to do to get one more token or whatever it was. But this bundle, <laughs> I wonder how many people are literally just going to shotgun these bundles, just get double down tokens for every game. It's interesting. It's not something they've sold before. Yeah, so that's, that's new. Um, and I wonder if they've tested the system. I mean, obviously, they've tested a shitload with the previous battle passes. Uh, how these end up working. In theory, if you're good at understanding drafts, this should be a net positive. But people probably also have a very warped idea of how much they know whether a game is going to be a win or a loss, right? Mm. So I, it's fun. I, I like this. I think the tokens are cool. I don't know if they should be in a bundle like this, though. That's the That's the question, but... Anyway, that's, a, that's very different, so I'm curious to see how that's going to impact the game. If there's just going to be people doubling down in every game I play now uh, with this. I'm curious. Okay, go ahead. So, other side of the coin. Uh, I'm not going to go ham, by the way, if you were waiting mm -hmm. for that, Cinder. I've gone ham in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but, so again, in, in the vacuum, update's pretty cool. The problem is the context outside of it, which is the expectations that have been set over the course of how many months has it been? It's been since September. So that's seven months, let's say, give or take. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been several posts about how this is a huge update. They specifically talked about Crownfall being that update. They, uh, I assume they've kind of butchered a bit of the patch to put it in earlier, like with the, the new features, the quality of life stuff they put in like a month ago. But mm -hmm. several times they talk about a, an enormous gameplay update. I believe that's the quote. I don't have the link with me right now, but at some point they said gameplay update. And I think the thing that people want the most right now uh, are some sort of gameplay update, you know, mm -hmm. reworking ags, shards, the balance, like, but a lot, not just a letter patch. And then Ringmaster, which is still not anywhere to be seen. And that is the main reason people are really upset. If this... I feel like if this was in conjunction with Ringmaster, then maybe it's like, okay, mm -hmm. and with a little word that there's going to be a big uh, gameplay patch coming, then I don't mm -hmm. think there'd be much complaining at this point. Right. I'm not sure how much Valve actually cares about that. Uh, but regardless, I, I have to say, and I have genuinely lowered expectations in the last couple years with mm -hmm. like these updates. I am... So that means I'm just generally not that surprised when things are kind of underwhelming or whatever. I am shocked at how underwhelming this update was. Again, all the stuff that came out with this was cool. And maybe, I mean, I don't know if this changes my opinion if in the second act the other stuff comes out. But mm -hmm. I feel like that shouldn't uh, be the case. Yeah, I'm, I'm extremely disappointed. At least put Ringmaster in. Like something okay. gameplay related. So I wanted to correct me if I'm wrong on this. I've seen this narrative. I feel like I've seen this narrative all over Reddit. Where is Ringmaster? Valve said early 2024. They never did. 
the teaser says 2024. Okay. Am I missing something? Like, Ringmaster was never meant to be an early in the year hero. Then they would have written early 2024. Um, they just announced the hero very early, and then you could argue, okay, should it take that long to make a hero or whatnot? But I am not disappointed that Ringmaster isn't here because I wasn't. They, they had, I had no reason to expect that it had to be. Thematically, it has nothing to do with what Crownfall was supposed to be with Venge and Skyrath. He might become a part of the story, and then they release it with that. That's possible. I don't know. Maybe he's in Act Two, Act Three, whatever. Somehow they weave him into it, but. In terms of everything we've seen about the hero lore-wise and the little teaser and how this fits, I, I don't know if he's even a part of this. Uh, that doesn't mean he can't come out until this is concluded, but I, I don't know if he's a part of the story. We'll see. Um, so I'm personally not disappointed that he isn't in there because they didn't promise it. Now, am I wrong in saying that is what I'm... Okay, yeah. I, it seems like based on your chat, I'm not wrong about that because I think the thing they said early 2024 was Crownfall, right? not Ringmaster. And I think that's why people are like, okay, when is Crownfall coming? It's not early 2024 anymore. And in Valve time, you know, April is early 2024, but it's a bit of a stretch. I think, but, okay, oh. I, I'm going to back up Reddit here a bit. First mm -hmm. of all, you're technically right. They didn't promise the hero early. If that's, I mean, I'd have to go mm -hmm. back and look, but I assume that that's true. I think it's very safe for everyone to assume that the hero would have been done by now. Very safe to assume based on literally every other year. Literally every single mm -hmm. fucking year, maybe outside of COVID, that there's been a hero coming out with enough time to be tested and then have an AGS shard added eventually and then put into captain's mode in time for TI. We're at a point now where I, I don't know if five months is enough to be able to do that. And that's if it came out with it today. Okay. So I think it, I, I understand why, I mean... Technically, you're right, but I still think you're wrong. <laughs> I think okay, I, I, was, I was very much right. so expecting it. Okay, so for me, the, the, this wasn't a discussion of is it, should it take this long? It's just the narrative that I'm seeing is that people feel let down because they were quote-unquote promised ringmaster early 2024. I just wanted to clarify that they weren't. Then we can discuss whether it's reasonable that it's taking this long and if the time that they're releasing it will be good or bad. Uh, but... I just wanted to clarify that because I feel like it's important whenever wrong narratives are spun that you just dispel them, right? Because we can give Valve crap for whatever we want, but at least be, you know, keep it honest, right? Um, so do I think Ringmaster should have been out by now? I would say yes, for the reason that you're saying that give it enough time to be tested and balanced in time for TI. Do I know why it's not out? No, uh, but I also know that it wasn't guaranteed that it would come out now. So Crownfall itself, um, I'm a little bit in a different camp than you. I'm not massively disappointed. I'm also not like mega blown away, but I think this is a fun new system. I think the two Arcanas look great. Uh, I think it's an in interesting take on trying to make the game feel more fun to just have some sort of progression system like this. Uh, I, I consider this a clearly upgraded Cavern Crawl for me. Mm -hmm. um, my concern is that for people that play a lot, the acts are too short. So that's actually the biggest problem here is given the time frame that you have and the amount of games you need to win, if you play a lot, you will be through this very quickly and be like, okay, when's the next act coming out? Um, but for the, the good thing about it is for casual players, they have a reasonable chance of keeping up. I think the cavern crawl was very overwhelming for people that had time to play one or two games a day or a weekend, right? Mm -hmm. They couldn't finish it. So Valve probably has some data on that. How far did people get in their cavern crawls? How much did they interact with the system? I think this will be way more popular, personally, than the cavern crawl was. So that gets a big thumbs up from me. Uh, like I said, the Arcanas are good. I think a big gameplay patch, I would agree we're due for that. And I also would have liked it to be out by now. Um, when did the last letter patch come out? Was it a month ago? They Ish. all blur together to me. Yeah. So. so I think the reason people are so starved for a big patch is not that necessarily that it's been very long since the last big patch. It's that I think the letter patches maybe didn't do enough. So mm -hmm. the meta and the feel of the map, you can have a letter patch that imp impacts the, the feel of the game more. We've had that in the past, like some 
D or E patch that actually shook things up quite a lot. I feel like the previous couple of ladder patches we've had for 734 have been very safe, if you will. They haven't like tried to move the gold or move the the balance too much around. Uh, some of the really popular heroes got nerfed, but not by enough that they're falling out of favor. Um, so I understand that you don't want to over nerf stuff, but maybe being a little bit more brave with, with trying to change things more would have been more positively received. Because patching in Dota is fascinating, right? Because like the game itself has a ton of variety right now. There's tons of playable heroes, but it's always you're always going to be biased toward the heroes that they don't like and if they're or that you don't like and if they're good for a long period of time you feel like the game is the same all the time even if it isn't so it's just like some bias well, thing I, I would argue from a casting perspective that well i'll be honest i didn't really watch much of this mm -hmm. last tournament that we'll talk about eventually today but when when, when there's a big patch and the formula mm -hmm. for the patch i'm talking about not a letter patch the formula right. for how you're supposed to play is figured out I think it gets really fucking boring, and I think we've been there for quite a while, which is why I've been waiting for a massive uh, shakeup, I guess. Yeah, and that's, that's where I'm thinking a letter patch could have changed the map a bit. Like, the way I see it, the, big, the new number patches include some sort of new mechanic or uh, new system, whatever it is, whereas you could have done an e-patch that made some changes to the map in terms of like timings with tormentors or the lotus pools how it influences laning some sort of uh thing about roche timing like whatever it, i think with the current systems in place you could do number tweaks that would make the formula break down right that's what we want mm. uh, you, you wouldn't have to do like a massive overhaul to the map and impl implement a new system for that feel it's just roche is on the same timer tormentors on the same timer Runers, runes are on the same timers. Lotus pools are on the same timer. So at some point, when this big patch dropped, nobody knew what the fuck was going on. And that was really fun because nobody knew the timers. Now everybody knows the timers. They have some sort of a visualization of how to play the game. Just fuck up the timers, see what happens. I think already that would change things quite a lot in terms of the formula of how people play, right? Or make it a little bit easy to break high ground, maybe. You know, change some armor on the towers, change glyph cooldowns. You could do all of that without making it 735 right mm. um so i don't know that's uh that's my take on it they could have done that in the letter patches i'm assuming that the big patch will come probably next month at some point uh i think it will come out after the upcoming esl on birmingham um i mean do you think that with but, each uh what are they calling these acts uh that there's mm -hmm. going to be some major thing because the way that again yeah. The, the context, uh, the expectation is a better way to put it that's been mm -hmm. said is that this is an enormous update. What, we're, what we saw today is not an enormous update. Can we agree on right. that? Yeah, I so would agree. So that means I don't think Acts 2, 3, either. and 4, maybe there's something major that comes with them other than the updated Crownfall yeah. stuff. So in and some ways, the, maybe it's a bit premature to rate this event, but... I think mm -hmm. generally, at least Reddit, which who knows if that's the vocal minority and whatnot, but I think generally it's been pretty negative. Yeah. It, you always need to remember that Reddit is the, on average, most hardcore casual part of the game, right? And I say hardcore casual because they're not like elite players, but they're very invested in the game. People that frequent there and type a lot, and, you know, so... For the casual player, this is probably something nice to just log into. Oh, cool, there's a new thing. Let's see. Oh, nice, you can play this like path, and oh, this reminds me of this in that game, or blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think for them, this is, this is good fun. If you're like heavily invested in this game and you had very high expectations, I agree. I think it's fair for people to have expected more based on the wording. But now the question is, when Valve said Crownfall was going to be huge, was it all the acts combined or the launch, right? And when they made that announcement, was this the original plan? Or did they realize they bit over more than they could chew and they had to divide it into acts mm -hmm. to be able to put it out in time, right? right? I actually think this might, this is pure speculation. This might not have been the original idea, but they might have decided, okay, 
the, the scope of what we're trying to do here, we, we can't get it done in time. So we will break it down into bits uh, and then push those out. Um, if this was the plan all along uh, to do it this way, then I, I genuinely, I don't think they were trying to like deceive the community or lie to them. I think when this whole Crownfall epoch is over, like these four months of it, uh, it's, this will have been a really big event, I think. So this just being act one, I'm, I don't know. I know I'm always kind of a positive or optimistic person. I, I'm quite hopeful. I think, I think this is a, for me, this is a pretty good start to it. And then now the question is, okay, are the next acts going to be like small additions or will they actually have, you know, some, some chunk behind them? Yep. But, we'll see. Uh -huh. Okay. I, I feel like the response is overwhelmingly negative from what I've seen. I was actually surprised how negative it was. I know Reddit can be fierce, but... I mean, regardless of whether the update is cool or not, they're expecting something else, and I think they were mostly justified in expecting something mm -hmm. else, because I was as well, and I was severely disappointed, honestly. Even though I look at this update, yeah, this is cool, but I'm mm -hmm. still... I was expecting something else that would... Like, in terms of people that don't play that much, like, I'm in that category right now, uh, you go through ebbs and flows over 20 fucking years of playing this game, but um, this isn't really going to make me play <laughs> so what a new were hero you or ga major gameplay update. would. I was expecting okay. uh, one of the two, I guess. I see. Okay, so either a big patch or ringmaster to be a part of this, step yeah. one. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, I think All right, that's because that's what I was thinking this. to myself. Is everyone's like, I'm so disappointed. I expected more, and I was like, okay, well, what did you expect? And yeah, if that's the gameplay patch, I understand. Like, then this. Yeah, I will I, say I though, don't... in terms of like cosmetics, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not that big into cosmetics anymore these days. But uh, this is a very non-greedy approach, so I, I appreciate that from afar. I think this is I feel like this system is pretty good. Hopefully, I also think it does the, well for them because then they'll be incentivized to do more non-greedy approaches like this as opposed to the fucking keys and all that CS bullshit. And without going into detail, looking over every set like we've done in the past because this episode would take forever, but I would say the overall quality, this is above average for a chest. Yeah, both of them. I would agree. Well above average. So they're quite good as well, the treasures, I would say. So, oh, I'd say above yeah. average. That's as far as I'll go. Yeah. But... um. We yeah, should move on. The gameplay... Yeah, we should move on. I guess the question is... Okay, let me give you a hypothetical here. Last question. You can right. either push, the pa push a major gameplay patch with this that isn't fully finished, okay. or you could wait with all of this and release it in two weeks together with a gameplay patch. What do you think is the better move? For who? The community? For, like, what do you think would be more well received so delaying two weeks but you get everything or staggered yeah, yeah. Delaying i think two weeks but then they drop the big patch together with this or doing this now and then the big patch comes well, in May. You're, you're, what do you think so there's no communication i assume in this no. scenario oh, no, that, i mean let's be let's keep it realistic okay that's <laughs> that's not happening so uh <laughs> that's a tough one I would, I, would, I would take C, which is, it should have been ready by now. It's been seven Yeah, months. okay, sure, right. <laughs> but that, because I'm just thinking to myself, in this situation, Valve can't win without dropping all of it at once. And the, I don't know enough about development times on shit like this and how many people they're working on the game, if it's feasible or whatnot, right? Because I think, I think it's fair from the community to expect more than this, given the time frame that there has been with a big update. I'm sure it's coming within not too long. I would be surprised if it doesn't come out in May, to be honest. Um, but yeah, given, given the time frame and how much time they've had to plan, having a big patch come out with this would have definitely been very well received. But yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just less invested in this being absolutely enormous than other people are mm. i'm not too disappointed so anyway you never, you never are so uh, moving so. on official announcement that the dota 2 wiki has moved to liquipedia so if i click on this link that is 
the new home, it looks exactly the same as the Dota 2 wiki. Uh, until you click a hero, then you can see there's a little bit of differences. But basically, Liquipedia and all their, or not Liquipedia, um, the Dota 2 wiki people have been looking for new hosting for quite a while. We talked about this on a past episode, and they have found it via Liquipedia. I think it's obviously the perfect place uh, to, you know, be able to get all the info about all the mechanics in Dota because it's endless and it takes a shit ton of work to maintain this. And I know that they're going to be getting help from other people within Liquipedia because there's a huge, I mean, I don't think anybody gets paid, which is a different story in and of itself, but the volunteers that help this thing run uh, are a huge part of not just Dota, but, but esports in general. So glad to see that they have found a home. Anything to yeah. add, Cinderman? Um, I'm just testing the page. It's really fucking fast. I feel like this runs way smoother than the old wiki did. Yeah. Like when you click on a hero, it instantly loads everything. The other one, I think was the site was slower. There were more ads or whatnot, cluttering it up. It was less optimized. That's true. The uh, ads were awful on that. Liquipedia is very effective and it's, I mean, for me personally, this is just personal bias. It's nice to have everything in the same place. Cause this is where I go for tournaments as well. So now I just have one page where all of it is. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy for them after the issues they had with the previous, um, with the previous server or whatever you want to call it, that they found this. Cause I think I don't really have any concerns that this is going to become problematic for them in any way. I keep liquid in very high regard and yep. liquidpedia has been a resource for Dota for countless years. That's been really, really solid. So this is great news. It's just looks, it looks awesome. It feels awesome. So very yep. nice. Perfect meld, I believe. Perfect partnership for sure. Yep. Moving on to the Elite League Tournament, Cinderin, which I watched very little of. So you're going to have to talk a lot in this segment. Take it away. I think we left yeah. off after the group stage, right? Because we did talk about yeah. the, the format. I think neither of us watched this tournament particularly much. So I think it's it's fair to say that, you know, this this is the tournament that was the big story in terms of this versus other tournaments was the Swiss. After that, it's pretty similar. You know, it's just the standard double a limb uh, with teams seated in based on this, the placement from, or rather it was Swiss into groups into double a limb. Mm. So this is a very long online tournament format. This tournament lasted for two full weeks uh, from March 31st until April 14th. And it was a, it was a long path for the teams to get there, but it was also a million dollar online tournament. So uh, you can compare this to, like, say, a Dream League that lasts two weeks, and then at the end of the day, is it really... It's not that different in terms of duration, but it is different in the amount of games, right? This was very jam-packed with action, so there was a lot of games. Um, but yeah, I guess the overall story was going to be, will Falcons just do it again? And it looked like they were going to, because they started in first place in their group after the Swiss, and then in the... The, the Swiss, they didn't even have to play, right? Yeah, they were seeded into group stage. So uh, in the first round of playoffs, they 2-0 the first, the first opponent, they 2-0 the second opponent, and then they're in the grand finals. So, you know, they had to play group stage in two series to get top two. Um, they beat Extreme and then Azure Ray, so they had to beat the two Chinese giants that came through the group stage. And on the other side of the bracket... I, I don't know if you want to go through everything. I guess not. This is already a long episode. So we'll just, uh, let's talk about the overall results and the biggest story. So the biggest story is, will Falcons lose? The conclusion to that story is yes. They have been dethroned this time uh, by extreme gaming, Shannon. I told you Chinese teams are always going to win. This is the uh, first time the you didn't predict. The yeah. one time we don't predict it, they of course do win. So wonderful. Yeah, the Cinder and um, Curse. Pretty powerful. Azure Ray gets third. So two out of three Chinese teams in top three, uh, which is, I want to say, very unusual for the last three years of competitive Dota. Oh, yeah. The region is definitely heating up, which is interesting to see. And I think, personally, think very good for the game. Uh, Liquid got fourth. And then, as alluded to, Falcons get second. This finals was... I mean, it was like, okay, our Falcons just again going to roll them. They win game one, but the next two games, Extreme actually kind of just fucking stomped them. Like, this was not very close, second and third games. The fourth game was a bit more action-packed, almost reached an hour. But for this patch, games two and three had an average playing time of 31 minutes. 
So Extreme actually just obliterated them. Um, so that was that was it. That's the story of this tournament. Um, congrats, of course, to Extreme on I believe their org's first tier one win ever in Dota. Actually, mm. uh, I think Extreme have had a ton of podium finishes, but never actually won an international event. So that is very cool. Uh, I'm quickly gonna check. No, actually, never mind. That's all good. Yep, that's Elite League. That was a long tournament. Very cool. You, you like the Swiss, right? We've talked about this. You like Swiss. Cheese, maybe. <laughs> no, uh, so. I think it's, it's interesting, yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I didn't watch much of the tournament, so I can't really speak to whether I like it in Dota or not. No, just, just the tournament concept, right, of having Swiss. Yeah, I think it's nice because you don't have any dead games. Mm -hmm. like dead series where the games are meaningless so that's kind of cool but then they switched into a round robin stage that does have dead games yeah so effectively you just added a swiss just level to, add to a the swiss. tournament and then you had the round robin anyway well so. if you think about it like the way that uh dream league did it they have two group stage basically mm -hmm. the same format that's yeah. i think more weird i think the fact that you switch it up is cool yeah, I think that is uh, something that Dream League might want to look at because, yeah, just having two group stages and they're both called group stages, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Takes away a bit of the luster. How do you think the community would receive a big tournament like this, a million-dollar tournament, being run like a CS major? So I, Swiss I, into Swiss into single LM. Hmm. Do you think people would hate it? Or do you think they would be open to the idea? Well, they, well, of course they won't be open to the idea, Cinder. And these are Dota players, okay? <laughs> uh, we're all old now, and we don't like change. But right. I'd be interested to see how that works. Uh, double Swiss. Mm. Yeah, and then no, single no, no. LM, which is very this, I think si single LM people definitely won't like, 100%. Right. So, but you could thing. see Swiss Swiss into double LM playoffs. Yeah, I think so. I actually think that would be a quite nice format, to be honest. I, I'm with you. I don't like single limb either in Dota in particular. But I don't, yeah. I think double Swiss into, into double limb does sound quite nice when I look at it. Huh. All right. Let's finish off the episode with the place that we are going to, which is Birmingham. That's right. Not Alabama, Birmingham. Birmingham. Uh, ESL 1 will be taking place. And you and I will be casting, of course. And there are a bunch of teams here that we would probably have a... You think you can predict better than me this time, Cinderin? Hmm? I can't, because... Well, I can't do better than you did last time. That's right. I can right. do better than you this time. The last time you got top three right, in order even, if you were to give an order. That was fucking crazy. That's so not happening again, we, by the way. We have Gaiman, Betboom, Extreme, Team Liquid, Tundra, OG, Spirit, Falcons, G2XIG... Talon, Shopify, and Heroic. All right, let's do top three in a dark horse, okay? Top three, no particular order? Yeah. Okay, well. Well, we can also do order if you want. I'll do... No, let's I not do down. order. I'll do <laughs> Falcons. Okay. Uh, Falcons is the easy one. I mean, Extreme just won, okay. and the patch didn't change, so unless Crownfall lowers their FPS... I'll go with extreme top three as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'll say bet boom. Okay. It's close. Daring though. today, are we? Yeah. I mean, they're good at um, getting top in tournaments now, just not winning it. They can yeah. never win. Hmm. It's hard to so, go for Spirit. reference, in Elite League, they got sixth in their group. It's fine. Okay. So maybe it is a bit daring, actually. Okay. And then now, Dark what Horse. I'm asking myself is, is this tournament big enough for Spirit? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. They're waiting for Riyadh. Uh, they got to hold their cards. They got seventh in their group. <sighs> I don't know. I'll I feel say... like one of these Eastern Europe teams is going to level up for this, but I don't know if they're going to level up enough. Right, I'm taking Falcons. It's boring, but it's probably... It seems very likely on track record. Mm -hmm. uh, do we believe in gaming maybe this time? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll take Falcons Extreme like you, but I will not take Bet Boom because then it's boring. We have the same. 
Yeah, but you and like I also don't. I actually don't think them either. I'm torn between Liquid Gaming and Spirit, actually. Uh, Liquid were close. They got fourth. And it's LAN. I'll say Liquid. Liquid, Liquid are better on LAN. And they're worse on Dream Leagues. So True. All right. Dark Horse. Uh, Take your pick. Dark Horse. And, and what do we consider a Dark Horse in a 12-team tournament? A team that isn't going to get top... Probably will not get top six or four. Okay. One of the two. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Tundra. Okay. And you? I think I will go with... Hmm. I'm torn between Talon and Heroic. I'll say, uh, I'll say Heroic. I think. Yeah. I pick Heroic. All right. I'll, I'll save this one, Shannon. I'm saving it. Okay. There we go. All right. Very cool. Good. Okay, I think that brings this episode to an end. Uh, let us know what you thought of a Crownfall update in the comments. Try to keep it PC, of course. Until next time, hope to see some of you people at Birmingham. Uh, if Cinder and I are... Uh, Wait, when are you flying, actually? Uh, tomorrow, or later today. Yeah, okay. My flight is like, not you, early, You have though. to be flying on the 19th, right? So. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay. okay, hope to see some of you people there. Until next time, Suns fan Cinder and signing out. Goodbye. We will not be doing bye an episode bye. in Birmingham. We'll do it when we get back. Goodbye. Oh, okay. Bye-bye. We say things that don't mean anything. Subscribe. <laughs>